Customer service. Yes. Bucket hat. It's bucket hat time. TC, you're undefeated, man. You're undefeated. Hello and welcome to another edition of the TC and Company podcast. Tom Karen with you in Atlanta. The Red Sox with a little two-game series against the Braves before another day off. Then they open up a homestand. The St. Louis Cardinals coming to town. Over the weekend at Fenway Park, we will hit the quarter pole of the season. So while it's still early, it's no longer very early. And a lot of people are starting to talk about the Red Sox and their hot start. The eight-game winning streak streak that came to an end Sunday in Philadelphia really got people thinking that this could indeed be a surprisingly fun season of baseball in Boston and a big part of the reason they have been succeeding of late is the improved starting pitching the Red Sox getting five six or more innings from their starters nearly every night and James Paxton returning from his rehab assignment to join that rotation some people thought Tanner Houck would be the pitcher headed for the bullpen when Paxton in return, but Alex Cora after Sunday start saying he will stay in the rotation at least for the next start. He joined me in this week's podcast to talk about the ongoing referendum of whether he should be a starter or a reliever and about what he is trying to improve on so he can go deeper into games. Tanner Howe, the guest on this week's edition of the TC and Company podcast. So Tanner, uh, we're coming off that performance the other day, uh, you know, it's thinking about this podcast and, and looking up some stuff on you. You ever Google yourself? I have not, actually. So if you Google yourself, it's it's really funny how over the past whatever weeks, six weeks, right, every time you pitch, it's immediately like a referendum on Tanner Howe, back in the rotation next time. <laughs> Tanner Howe, will he be in the rotation next time? Tanner Howe, back in the rotation next time. I know you, you block out all that noise, but that said, your performance has allowed you. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to be a quarter of the way through the season this weekend when you make your next start. How good does it feel that you have, and nothing's ever guaranteed in this game, we know that, but, but you've been able to hold on to that spot and do exactly what you want to do, be a starting pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, I think for me it just shows that continuing to work, continuing to push yourself, and just trusting, I, I know everyone says it, but trusting the process of, you know, showing up every day and, and doing the right things and, and putting in the, the small detail work, like, it, it really does pay off. I, I know it's pretty cliche to say that, but if a lot of people are saying it, then obviously there's something to it. Uh, it, it work. It goes down to you know having the great communications with Bushy and Walk and and other guys in the pitching staff of just continuing to better myself, looking for an opportunity to push myself, and ultimately just and just really just trusting the process. So it, it just boils down to that. What's the relationship, the communication been with like with Cora? Like you know he's obviously yeah. first he says the other day he's making his next. Start. All right, like before we have to ask the question, because everyone's going to ask the question, right? What's it been like as far as the communication goes, as far as having him in your corner? What's that been like? A AC is an amazing manager and an even better person. Uh, you know, it's, it starts with him at the at the helm every single day, and I have ultimate faith with him, and I know that he's looking out for me as well as, you know, looking out for myself. So I, I have full faith in him. He's an incredible guy, and, you know, if anyone ever really does get the chance to meet him, meet him you'll understand what I'm talking about because he, he is a special human to have, uh, and I, I'm glad that he's, you know, the manager of the Red Sox. You had that, that the nuclear inning against Toronto. You come back out for another inning, and, and I forget who's doing our game. I've been Euclid said, man, he just looks different. You came out, like, fired up, and you one, two, three in that inning, and I said at the time in the postgame show, I said, you know, we'll see how it looks back, but that might be the most important inning of the year for Tanner Howe. What did it mean to come back out, get a chance to, go to put, put a good positive finish to that day? Yeah, it Ending on a good note is the way that I can put it, and yeah, I'm thankful to AC to to allow me to go back out there and and just kind of just regather myself almost, kind of like a reset the reset myself, but in game moment of hey, go up there, get a zero, and put the put the team in the best chance to win. It, for me, it, it just kind of helped build that confidence and and push myself that, hey, like, I know I can do this. Like, if I go out there and trust my ability, trust my, my pitches, it, there's truly nothing better that I can do. And, you know, thankful to AC to pull me aside and to tell me, hey, like, they're your best stuff. Like, 
all the time. And, you know, it, it just worked out there. So thankful, you know, to have him do that for me. And that inning sets up the bullpen for success. You come back and win the game. How good did that feel? It's great. You know, it, it's, a, it's a team win. And this is a team sport where, you know, they're going to pick me up. I'm going to pick them up. And it, it's it's a great relationship because because of that. Like, you, you have to trust every person, one through nine. You have to trust everyone in the bullpen. You have to trust everyone in the rotation. And it, you just come together as a family. We're, we're together for 162 plus, and you, you get really close with these people. You're together more often not with them than your family. So it is a brotherhood. It, it just comes together. You introduced the cutter that you've been using now, um, you kind of refine the, 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 the splitter a little bit. What does that mean to your overall effectiveness? You want to be a starting pitcher. You need to have multiple pitches to be a starting pitcher. How have you, you know, it's one thing to have it in spring training. It's another thing that maybe if one doesn't work out too well, it's easy to get away from it. You got to stick with it, right? Yeah, it, the splitter has been a pitch that I've been working on for three years now. Uh, and the cutter is something that was something I kind of came up with during the offseason. So I still look at the cutter as a, a pitch that I can continue to develop, continue to push myself. I know it's a, an effective the pitch that I'll use for years to come and the splitter like I said was three years in the making it, it was one of those pitches where you learn at the beginning you look your front you keep refining refining and fri refining until it's it is where it is now uh, it, it's a pitch that I continue to try and push myself to use even more in games I, I really like throwing it uh, as well as mixing it to righties and lefties did you learn the cutter from someone or how did you come up with it uh, I was mainly just looking for something that I could continue to jam into lefties uh, as well as to make them uncomfortable uh, in the box. I, I do that pretty well with the sinker in uh, and I, I wanted to be able to save my slider uh, for later in counts uh, and so the cutter kind of came to my mind. Uh, it's a pitch that I truly do just try and throw a four seam fastball uh, and just trust that if it goes you know straight the intention is to you know, just go up and into lefties, uh, but it's been one of those pitches where it's worked out really well. Early in the season, and you weren't alone, this team had a little bit of trouble putting away innings, and, and, and your numbers reflect that. You know, Early in the season, the home runs were coming with two outs. Yep. A lot of the damage was coming with two outs. Is that, can that get in your head? Like, How do you fight something like that before it becomes a thing that now you're dealing with? Uh, for me, I really just try not to think about it. You know. It, the past is the past, and as much as you you want to be able to flush it in the moment, emotions will get better of you sometimes. But being able to calm, really like, refine that, bring that in, uh, and calm down, and just you know take that step off the mound and say, hey, like all right, I still got to execute this next pitch, uh, is is huge, and that's how you stop the big inning from happening. I'm continuing to learn that on a daily basis, uh, and it'll be something that, regardless of you know, 10 years down the road or present day, emotions will get the better of you sometimes. That's okay, but it's about bringing it back in and, and just slowing the game down. To go deeper into games, you need to use all those pitches. Have you sort of changed, maybe not pitch selection per se, but just kind of the mentality, thinking sort of, all right, here's going to be the first time, second time, third time. How yeah. do I get these guys with different stuff? Uh, first and foremost, my my entire game plan is to go right after hitters. Strike one, strike two. Uh, any anyone here is going to say that. It, it's going it's going and getting ahead of guys and not not falling behind. And you don't want to put yourself in a three ball count in a you know two ball count. You want to be on the attack. You want to have them on their heels saying like, all right, what's he going to throw here? He's got you know four or five pitches. He's he can throw any of them at any point. Uh, and so just having that mindset of, hey, strike one, strike two, now I can play around. I, I got all my pitches to work with. You don't know what's coming. You might, have, you might think you know, and then all of a sudden it's a different pitch. It's seven inning start against the Twins. Is that as good a start as, as you felt in a while, like being able to go that deep? Yeah. Kind of really what? One run through the first six. I mean, you, you were really dominating that day. You kind of walk off with everyone talking about, is he a starter? And to have a start like that, how did that feel? 
felt great. Uh, it was one of those games where I, f I felt like everything was working. Uh, in in the grand scheme of things, in 30 starts, you know, you might have five where you you're feeling that way, uh, to where you can you feel like you can do no wrong. You might have 10 to 15 that are kind of you have a few of your pitches working. You know, throw maybe the one to the side for the day, and then you might have you know five that aren't so good. But uh, to have one of those games where you go out there and just feel so in sync with the, uh, it was Wong behind the plate and, and just with everything, it, it was a great feeling. Connor and Reese have both done a real good job with you guys, obviously. Talk a little about that development. You know, Christian was here and was kind of the guy forever. And, and Connor comes up, obviously we see what he's doing. I mean, right now, you look at some of the metrics, you could argue he's and Real Muto are probably the two best defensive catchers in baseball right now. Throws everybody out. The pop time is incredible. But talk a little about the, the sort of growth of that relationship, how you guys build on each other. I was talking to Connor, last week's guest. He was just talking about the library of knowledge. Every time he catches somebody, he just learns more about the guys. Does that work the same way for the pitcher? Yeah, I mean, working with the same catcher, I've only thrown to, to Wong this year so far. Uh, but to, to continue to build that relationship with him, it, it seems like we continue to get more in sync with each start, uh, with, with each outing, uh, as well as, you know, if he steps in and catches the bullpen for the day. So it, building that relationship with him has been incredible. It, he, we kind of, you know, know what we're, we're thinking at a di different circumstance or different times uh, during the game, which is super helpful. Uh, but it's also a growing relationship that, you know, will continue for hopefully years to come. Do you use the pitch comm on your end? I actually do not. You haven't been? I, ha I haven't. I've thought about putting it on my glove or I think some people do it on, like, their jersey yeah. or, or whatever. I've thought about it. Uh, but you know, I, I trust both of them back there. So, I, you know, I'll shake off every once in a while, but it's not a very frequent thing. Uh, and I, I trust what they have to say. Well, you talked about that. You know the growth of the the connection between the two of you. Do you find more often than not you're thinking the same pitch? Hundred percent. Yeah, it, it's a it's continuing you know conversations that we have, uh, as well as you know just trusting that our pregame meetings, our in between inning uh, meetings, are going well. I think him continuing to work with uh, Tech, uh, as well as you know working with me, working with Bushy, uh, the the communication has been great. And the growth together, I think, is a is a great product of that. You work quickly anyway, but you're working quicker now with mm -hmm. the, with the clock. Has it been uh, an effect to you at all? Uh, I haven't. F I at first, I, I definitely would say I was a little uh, not rattled by it, but it definitely seemed a little quick. Uh, but after you know three four outings during spring training, I, I felt like it was just part of the game now, and I made the adjustment pretty quick. Spring training numbers weren't great. So I mean, is that like a, is that like a bad bullpen? You just flush it away and get out here and get going for the season? Yeah, I mean, lights come on, different you know, different energy. You have the the adrenaline, the crowds getting into it. Uh, but during spring training, I I was glad to honestly have it. You know, I, I struggled, but to be able to bounce back from that, uh, and also the learning of what not to do during spring training. I guess glass half full uh, mentality there. Um, but it, it was it was one of those where I, I pushed myself during spring training, show up during the season, and you just got to be better. So to be able to have a rebound, it, just keep working. But part of that was, again, you were working with the cutter, tinkering with the splitter. Like I, we talked about sticking with the process. Again, it goes back to that, right? would have been easy to say, to hell with this. You walk away, you could be a three-inning yeah. reliever, stick with what got you here and go on. But you kind of pushed through that, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it, I was. I was working on kind of throwing a cutter at any point that I, I could uh, just to see, you know, what it was like uh, on the analytical side. Like I said, it was just a thought that I had and just kind of played out pretty well. Uh, but yeah, it was also throwing the splitter in the in the same sense of hey, like it's a pitch that I want to throw to righties. It's a pitch that I want to use more. So the only time to do it is to do it in game. Whenever your your emotions are there, the adrenaline that you have. Uh, so to be able to do that during spring training, great learning process. Uh, the results weren't as good as I wanted it to be, but uh, you know, flush that down the toilet and let the season begin. Dave Bush said you're really receptive at in-game adjustments. Some guys aren't. Some guys are too heated. It's hard to get. But he said you're a guy who 
after throwing a pitch or maybe not throwing a pitch he can talk to between innings have you always been that kind of thinking between like some guys you know talk to me after the game I don't want to do this now I actually was never that way. Uh, I'll fully admit that it's something that I had to learn. Uh, it was it was about refi uh, refining myself and and like I said, not letting the emotions of that last inning get to me. Uh, understanding that it happened, and unfortunately, I can't take back those six runs. I can't take them back as much as I would love to go back and redo it and you know throw a different pitch at this spot and this. I got to continue to move forward and I got to continue to get guys out. Uh, it, it's a hard mindset to have, but you have to kind of have that mindset whenever you're out there pitching. Otherwise, it, it can just blow up on you. There's, there's no mulligan ERA. You don't get to take that one <laughs> inning out, right? Because the numbers no. would be great otherwise. <laughs> there is not a mulligan inning. There's no breakfast balls here. No breakfast balls here at the big leagues. Uh, you know, you talked about the family of the Red Sox. Alex Cora was talking at the beginning of this spring. He said he really liked the guys who came in. It's hard for veterans to come in sometimes and sort of have a voice. But, I mean, you talk about Turner and Duvall, Kenley Jansen. These guys have won championships. We kind of went through it in 13, right? Like like Gomes and Victorino and Napoli and Dempster. These guys had great success elsewhere. And that really kind of elevated the clubhouse. I mean, you still got to get it out on the field. You got to play. And this team is playing well. But the, the, the attitude down at spring training seemed like day one. There was kind of a different shift of focus. And this didn't talk badly about any group before. But this team, considering what, you know, last place last year, you almost felt that from day one. Do you guys feel that almost from the start? Yeah, the energy was just different this year. I noticed it day one. Uh, honestly, it, it was great. I, I love that everyone is here. I mean, it's an incredible group, incredible group of veterans that I I feel like are incredible to talk to. They're they're knowledgeable of the game, but also at the, like they're able to talk to you about it and explain it in their eyes and what the way that they see the game. And just the communication aspect of it is is the biggest thing. And any you know young person should know that the communication side of this game is almost more important than the actual physical side. You need to have the communication with, you know, for me, with Wong and Bushy and, and them. But uh, as an older guy, the communication to the young guys on, you know, how to win and how to how to operate in this league at you know a high capacity i mean the the stat on the scoreboard that i always find incredibly fascinating is it, it was turner i think and kenley have been in like the last nine postseasons so they know how to win they know how to get to the postseason and that's what we shoot for kenley is a a, a different personality in the club like closers tend to be their own guys mm -hmm. at least my experience you know they're over there in the corner everybody leaves them alone they go out in the seventh <laughs> inning they throw the ninth they get on with their lives this guy's like involved he's talking to everybody you saw it at spring training you see it now it's closing in on 400 only six guys have ever had 400 saves in major league level what's it been like to be around him has if you learned anything from him what's he been like yeah i mean he's he's an incredible incredibly knowledge guy you know i talked about the communi communication side and he has the communication side like he, you know, he, he over, he, I would say over, over communicates, which I don't think that's actually a thing. Uh, but, he, you know, he's constantly, you know, talking to everyone and, and giving advice and, you know, his input. And I, I really respect that because you are right. There's only six people that have 400 saves. And I'd be, you know, silly not to sit there and listen to him. I mean, obviously he's done something right for his entire career. So uh, it's, an, it's amazing to have teammates like that, uh, to know that they're incredible baseball players, but also incredible people. You haven't been on the major league team to see vintage Chris Sale. Now we're starting to see, you know, 99 the other day, the double digit strikeouts. And that was with an inning that almost got away from him, right? But he's still gets that under control what's it been like watching what he's doing right now uh, it's 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 amazing you know I, I grew up watching him and to see him do that you know to have a front row seat of that every single day to be able to watch him and Kluber both it has been incredible uh, you know Kluber's two times Cy Young I remember watching him uh, as well in high school do incredible things and to also watch Sale and have them as teammates now it I'd pay for a seat any day of the week. Are you a guy who gets to appreciate it? Some guys will tell you until they retire, they don't because it's such a grind. It is so hard 
to, to, to stay at the major league level, to succeed at the major league level, that they don't really get to look up. Do you get to look up at all? I will say, like, I I look up. Uh, I'll, 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 say, I'll use that phrase. I look up. I, I try to enjoy the moment. And I would be. I feel like I'd, I wouldn't give justice to the moment if I didn't appreciate it for what it was. To, to be able to recognize in those moments that, hey, like, this is, this is one of those, like, core foundation memories that I'll have, like, one day of, like, hey, like, I was there to watch, you know, Sale punch out 11 in Philly, like, and just these incredible things like the stadiums the friendships that i've made the the cities and getting to explore the cities like i i do like to live in those moments i do like to recognize them for for how cool they are that's awesome uh and you've done great work in the community obviously the pitch for adoption you started that i don't think people realize you've been doing that since day one yeah you were doing that in the minors yeah so we we actually started right after I got drafted. Uh, my agents were, hey, let's, you know, let, let's have a, a reason why uh, that you're doing this. And, you know, the pitch for adoption came to my mind in 2018 uh, was the first year that we did it. I, I remember saying that this is gonna grow with my career. Uh, that I knew that year one, it probably wouldn't be this glorious, you know, fantastic charity uh, given back to the community, uh, but tr trusting the process, just like I, I have with the with baseball. So it's it's grown over the years, and I hope to continue to grow it more. You have an adopted sister. I think I've told you this. I have two adopted brothers. I mean, if you're around. I can't imagine my family without them like you can't imagine your family without them. And, and now you've gotten into the Home for Little Wanderers, which is an amazing place. Tell me a little about uh, what that place has meant to you. I know you've done a lot for them, but yeah. what's it meant getting to know some of those kids and some of what they're going through? For me, working with the kids is is the greatest thing for like that I can do uh, to be able to just be there for the kids and just be a uh, a big brother to them is what I envision. I just want to be there for them if they need anything, if they need, you know, just just help in general. That they have someone in the community that that cares about them, and you know, I hope that by talking about an uncomfortable topic to talk about it sparks the interest in someone else to go out there and continue to, continuing the work as well as you know me continuing the work so it's one of those things where ugh, working with the home for little wanders has been great uh the relationship has just started but many many more times that i, I hope to go there and visit uh get them to come to fenway and to grow that relationship for many years to come you were talking before about getting to appreciate all of this that's a big part of it, isn't it? Using your platform, maybe shedding a light on something, helping those kids out in a way. Yeah, definitely. I, I wanted to use the platform for something good, for something different, uh, for, for the betterment of this country and the betterment of the next generation. Awesome. Got to ask you before you, we let you go here, the Red Sox tattoo. You've got the Believe tattoo. Now, now when, when you do that, doesn't it? What if I could trade it? <laughs> What if anything happens? So be it. Is it like a landmark, you know, a milestone of your life? Yeah. Wherever, Dude, you know, 30 I, years from me, now when you're done For playing? me, it's a landmark. Like, there, your life's a journey. Why Why not? Like, for me, like, I, I think of it as, you know, like, it's part of my life, part of my story. Like, why I, I see, you know, my body as an empty canvas that I hope to fill up with, with many more life stories. Uh many more to come in the future. I'm only 26 now. I hope to live a very long and fruitful life that I get to look back at one day and, you know, show my kids and maybe grandkids one day that, hey, like, I was kind of cool at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll know that. I don't think it'll be hard for them to figure that out. But to be the same age as my son, who I might have more ink than you. So I just want to, you know, you can look like you can keep them in places where not yeah. everybody sees them all the yeah. time, right? No, that, that was my one rule. I, I did want to be respectful about it. I wanted, my, my rule was if I put on a suit, I want to be able to cover them. See? Uh, at first. So no Mike Tyson, no, we're not going to go. No, no, not yet. No, I'm, I'm okay with that. I have plenty other room that I can work on first uh, before I'm doing the neck or the face or anything like that. All right, I'll ask you finally here as we wrap it up. Just that Alex Cora said, you know, James Paxson's coming back. Probably wouldn't have shocked any of us if he said, but it sucks, but we're going to have to put 10 in. But first thing he says, he's in the rotation. I asked you before and I'll ask you again. We're a quarter of the way through the season. And I know, you know, Nothing is guaranteed. The questions will always be there. 
but how good does it feel that as we approach that quarter pole, you've been making every start for the Red Sox? Yeah, for to, you know, throw 30 starts in a year. I haven't I haven't done that before, but I'm I'm a person that wants to continue to push myself. Uh, and I kind of say, why not? Why not do this? Why not, you know, make 30 starts and and do that? Like, who, who's to say I can't? Uh, I like I like doing that. I, I like showing that I can I can be better than what I was the the start before the the hour before the year before. Uh, and so to go out there and you know make what six starts now yeah. seven yeah. Um, you know, it's it's just part of the journey, part of the road that I gotta I keep I gotta stay on. Uh, but you know, to have that trust from AC is incredible. Awesome, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks for the visit, Tanner Howe with us this week's edition of TC and Company podcast. Thanks for checking it out.